Having a health bar above enemies is a very common feature in games, but making it appear in 3D space is not as simple as you might initially think. So here's how to make an animated 3D health bar using control nodes and also how we'll make a simple game to test this. We can use the sprite 3D node to put 2D images in the world. But using images like this, we lose all of the control node features we have for the UI. To have control nodes displayed in the 3D world, we need to make use of sub view parts. But first, let's create our health bar. We can create a simple health bar by using the progress bar or the texture progress bar node. We will use the first one, but let's take a quick look at the second one for now. The texture progress bar allows us to drag a background and a progress bar image into the node. Then, we can use the value property to fill the bar. But the bar does not stretch to fill the area yet. To get the bar working properly, activate the 9 patch stretch to allow the images to stretch. To fix the borders, expand the stretch margin, and here we can set the margin for the space that will not stretch. Doing that, now we have a perfect sprite health bar working. Now let's go back and make our health bar using the progress bar node. This works the same way as the other one, but instead of images, we use solid colors. Let's activate snap and extend the bar a little, and set the value to 50 so we can see the bar field. As a quick tip, you can click this button to hide the border gizmos around the node, so we can have a better look of our health bar. Now let's make this bar pretty. The way to change UI node appearances is by using theme overrides. Here we can change the font color, sizes, and other things. Inside styles, let's change our background. Click on the down arrow and let's add a new style flat, which is basically a flat solid color. Open it and let's make the base color red. Inside border width, let's give it a bottom border of 3 pixels. And let's make it a darker red color to make it look more dynamic. Set all corner radius to 3 as well, so we have a slight rounded borders. And in expand margin, let's add a 3 pixels at the bottom to account for the border we just added and keep the text centered with the background. And a very small shadow to highlight our bar. Now we need to do the same to our fill bar. To speed up things, let's copy our background and paste it to the fill style. Now we just need to change its color to green. The border color to dark green and remove the shadow. And we are done. A nice health bar without any textures. Let's add it to our character now. To show our bar inside the 3D world, we need to make it into a texture. And we can do that by using sub viewports. Let's add one now. A sub viewport will render cameras and UI nodes inside them into a texture. So, if we put our health bar inside it, we can see its results in the Spectre preview. And let's add a Sprite 3D now. Under Texture, select New Viewport Texture. And select our sub viewport. We can now see the render image in the world. Let's adjust its size. Go back to the health bar. But now we can't see it anymore. That's because of how viewport works. The editor is displaying its own viewport and can't directly display the two viewports inside it. There is a proposed fix for this problem, but for now, we need to work around this. So drag the bar outside the sub viewport so we can see it again. You can use the measure tool to get the exact size of your bar. Let's select the sub port and put in those values. So we have 208 pixels for the width and about 48 for the height. Let's put it back inside and check things out. And also place the sprite above the enemy. Back into our sub port, select transparent background to get rid of the gray color. It's hard to see here but you might notice that some pixels are bleeding at the bottom. This is a Sprite 3D bug, and there is a fix for this in the works, but for now, there are a couple things you can do. Opening the Sprite 3D flag section, setting the texture filter to nearest can sometimes solve this issue. And if that doesn't work, you can slightly adjust the bar position to fix this. In our bar, inside layout, transform. You can slide this position until the bleeding pixels are not visible anymore. Even though that works, it's not the ideal solution, and the bar isn't even centered yet. So let's improve how we make our HP bar. Let's add a panel control node, and put our progress bar inside it. 
Adjust the size of the panel so it's roughly the size of the HP bar you want. And on our progress bar, let's use the anchor preset and make it automatically adjust its width to the panel. This way, we can easily adjust the size later. Let's make the size of the panel to the same size of the viewport. That way we can see the final result while our node is outside of it. Let's add a small margin so we don't have the building pixels anymore. And we can use the small green pins to adjust the anchors. Putting them on the borders of the bar will make it so it will always keep a margin no matter how we scale our panel. The last thing we need to do is make the panel completely invisible. We can do that by adding a new style box empty in the team's override. Now we can finally put the panel inside the sub part. And as a last step, click on the panel and make sure its anchor is set to expand to fill the area completely. This way, we can dynamically adjust the sub viewport and it will automatically change our half bar size. Let's reset the texture filter inside the sprite so it looks better. And activate billboard to make the bar always face the camera. And we are done with the graphics. Now let's make this health bar into a reusable component for our game objects. Put the sub viewport inside the sprite. Right click it and save the branch as scene. Click on the scene icon to open it in another tab. Right now our viewport is not working. That's because we changed the scene. So we need to reset the sprite ID texture. And set the viewport texture again. If we go back to the game scene, there is still no health bar there. To make it show up there too, click on the reset icon for the texture. And now it's all back to working. Back to our health bar scene. Let's add a code to make the bar take damage. Here's our simple code. We have a signal that happens when the health bar hits zero and an exported value for the max HP. On the ready function, we set up the progress bar max value and values to the exposed max HP. We also have a public function take damage that is called to damage the bar. And if the value is near zero, we emit the no HP left signal. Let's rename this to health bar and create our enemy script. Our enemy script is also very simple. It will always move forward and take damage if it hits a rigid body 3D. The enemy is a character body 3D, so the way we check for collisions is a bit different. We call move and slide to move, and if it has collided with something, it will return true. If it has, we check for the collided objects for a rigid body 3D. And if there is one, then we call our health bar take damage, and await a few seconds until it can be hit again. Now all that's left is connect our health bar signal and destroy the enemy. Select the health bar, go to node and double click the no HP left signal to connect it. Let's find and select our enemy script and use the created function that is called when the HP hits zero. In here, we can simply destroy it by calling QE3. Let's quickly add a rigid body sphere so we can test if things are working. If the ball is on the enemy's path, the enemy will take damage when they collide. We can already make a game with this, but let's also animate the health bar going down. There is a very simple way to do it. Inside our health bar code, we can add a variable named real value to check for the HP of the bar. And on the take damage function, we can create a twin to animate the value property of the progress bar. We call twin property, passing the progress bar, the property we want to change, our final value, and how much time the animation will take. With this small change, we now have a perfectly fine working animated health bar. And here's how to create a very simple game with this. Save the enemy and the ball as separate scenes. Add a game script and a spawn timer. Set the timer to auto start and give it a wait time for the enemy spawn. And connect the timer timeout signal to the game script. Now every time the time ends, we can spawn an enemy at a random position. First we instantiate our enemy. Then we get a reference for our camera, we place the enemy at the camera's position and move it forward by 10 units and then randomly move it left and right relative to the camera. Finally, we make the enemy face the camera, so it will move towards it. And for our player, we need to spawn and throw balls with the mouse. We get the mouse click inside unhandled input, instantiate our rigid body ball and position the ball at the camera's position. Then we apply a force in the same normal direction of our mouse click by using the camera project ray normal and passing the mouse position to it. 
I also added a small delay for the ball to disappear after it hits an enemy. And that's it. We now have a working half bar and a small game to play around. You can now use the power of subdual ports to display control nodes in 3D space. If you made it till here, please leave a like if you liked the video. I hope this video helps. Thanks for watching and until next time.